Hello, welcome sa ating part 2 in the discussion of problem solving according to cognitive psychologists. Remember, from part 1 of our video, pinag-uusapan natin how to become a better problem solver. So, lahat ng concepts and principles that we are currently discussing in this video and the other video, lahat ito para matulungan tayo kung paano mas magumaling gumaling in solving our problems. And again, let me just review very quickly. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng problema? Any obstacle to your goal. Meron kang gustong ma-achieve, pero merong mga humaharang sa'yo to achieve that goal, those things can be considered a problem. Halimbawa, gusto mong mag-lose weight, gusto mong pumayat, pero hindi mo ma-overcome yung cravings mo sa ice cream, hindi mo ma-overcome yung temptation na bumili ng mga junk food or hindi mo ma-overcome yung katamaran mo to exercise, all those three na sinabi ko are considered a problem. Kasi lahat sila, hinihinto ka to achieve your goal which is to lose weight. So that's what you mean by a problem. And how do you solve those problems better? Yun yung pinag-uusapan natin in this video and also in the previous video. So far, ito yung mga binigay sa atin ng cognitive psychology na mga techniques on how to solve problems better. Gawin mong tanong ang problems, differentiate problems from facts of life, increase your knowledge through research, match mode of thinking to type of problem, and palipasin mo muna yung oras, also known as incubation. So, if you want to review any of these concepts na nakapaloob sa limang ito, you can just go back to the previous, previous video and watch it again. So, for today, we are going to discuss other techniques on how to teach ourselves to become better problem solvers. Let's go to application number six. Huwag kang tumakbo sa problema. Kasi by default, most people, when they hear the word problem, negative ka agad yung nasa isip. Therefore, kapag ganyan yung perception natin sa problem, negative, it's not good, it's stressful, it's painful, tendency is we run away. We don't face the problem. We deny the problem or we distract ourselves from solving the problem. Now, yung, yung mga ganyang strategies, running away from, from problems, it will not make you a better problem solver. Remember this, every moment that you spend in thinking about a solution to your problem or every moment that you don't run away from your problem, remember that you are slowly getting closer to the solution. Diba? Mas marami kang oras na ginugugol sa pag-solve ng problema, unti-unti, yung problema na yan nasosolve. Ngayon, hindi mangyayari yan kapag ang, ang tao umiiwas sa problema o tumatakbo sa problema. Sabi nga ng isang author, anyone can run away. It's super easy. Facing problems and working through them, that's what makes you strong. Hindi mo dapat iniiwasan yung problema. In fact, you need to see your problem as an opportunity for you to improve yourself. Now, how do you convince yourself na huwag tumakbo sa problema? Kasi understandable naman, valid naman yung mga nagsasabi na masakit kasi ang problema, nakakastress ang problema, hindi ako makakain, makatulog kapag may problema. All those experiences are valid. So how do you push yourself not to run away from problems? Ang pinakamagandang solution dyan is you see the problem in a positive way. Dapat maging positibo yung pananaw natin kapag may problema. And I think that's the reason why the book of James in the Bible is teaching this. Diba? Sinasabi dito, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Meron siyang nakitang positive side sa mga problema niya. Diba? Sabi ni James dito, bawat problema na kaharapin mo is an opportunity for you to improve your perseverance. It is, a, it is an opportunity for character development. So, the more you see your problems this way, nakakakita ka ng maganda sa isang problema o sa mga problema mo in general, mas gaganahan kang huwag tumakbo sa problema. Rather, mas magiging motivated ka to face your problem head on and then take advantage of the opportunities that those problems will give you. Mas lumalakas kang tao. Diba? May malaki kang problema. Pero pag nalampasan mo yung malaking problema na yon, what happened? You 
became a better person. Mas na-develop yung character mo. Mas naging pasensyoso ka. Mas naging mature ka. Mas naging magaling yung self-control mo. Mas na- naging magaling yung, yung pag strategize mo on how to solve problems. Diba? E, to make the long story short, problems make you a better person. If you see problems that way, opportunities to make me a better person, mas gaganahan ka na huwag tumakbo sa problema. So, yung mga merong problema ngayon, no, na, na nakikinig sa akin ngayon, sana ganun yung pananaw nyo sa problema nyo ngayon. Diba? What good thing this problem can make me? After I solve this problem, after I overcome this problem, ano yung mga uh, magiging mas maganda sa aking pagkatao because of this problem that I am currently facing. Kaya nga gusto ko rin yung kanta ni ano no, yung may title na Almost Over You. Sabi dito, I'm almost over you. I've almost shook this blues. So when you come back around after painting the town, you'll see I'm almost over you. Ito ay isang kanta ng pag-move on. Eh di ba isang problema yan na common sa mga tao who are experiencing relationships, it doesn't work. The problem is, how do you move on from that relationship emotionally? Ang gusto ko sa kantang ito, kung babasahin mo yung kabuunan ng kanta, hindi siya tumakbo sa problema. This person faced the problem head on. Hinarap niya yung lungkot, hinarap niya yung sakit of of the broken relationship. Karamihan kasi ng mga tao, well, hindi naman lahat, but most people, when they feel the pain of broken relationships, they deny it. They distract themselves, di ba? Magsha-shopping, magi stress eating, maglalasing, di ba? O kaya yung iba, gagamit ng ibang tao to move on from the past relationship, which is very wrong, wag yung gagawin. The best thing you can do is to face the problem head on. Harapin mo lahat ng pains, harapin mo lahat ng struggles na mararanasan mo from moving on to that relationship until it comes to a point na mamamaster mo na yung paghandle sa mga negative emotions na yan and that is the time na masasabi mong naka-move on ka na, over ka na sa taong yun. Kasi meron ka ng mga solutions na nagagawa every time you feel those negative feelings na nararamdaman mo from that broken relationship. Pero, hindi mo mafi-figure out kung paano mo ma-overcome yung mga negative emotions na yan kung tatakbuhan mo yung problema. You have to figure it out. And for you to figure it out, hindi ka kailangan tumakbo sa problema. You need to stay within the problem. Application number seven. Another way para mas magaling ka sa pag-solve ng problema mo is you need to pause and reflect. Most people, kapag meron kasing problema sa harap nila, they panic. Yan ang kalab- kalaban ng effective problem solving. Panic. It makes you emotional. Kapag ang utak natin very emotional while there is a problem, huwag ka nang umasa na maganda ang solution na maiisip mo. Emotion, being emotional, is not a good status or it's not a good state to be kapag nagsosolve ka ng isang problema. Sabi nga ng isang author, di ba, never make permanent decision on temporary feelings. Kapag nagsosolve ka ng problema at napapansin mong emotional ka, nagpapanik ka, anxious ka, while you are trying to solve that problem, huwag mo nang ituloy. Huwag mo munang isolve yung problem if you are highly emotional. Kasi nga, Let me demonstrate this to you, no? Sa cognitive psychology, meron tayong tinatawag na heuristics. ba? Diba? Heuristics, in layman's terms or in principle, hindi ito maganda for problem solving. So, cognitive psychologists will tell you if you are trying to solve a problem, make sure na yung iyong psyche, it is free from any forms of heuristics. Another term for heuristics na mas madaling intindihin is yung tinatawag na cognitive bias. Di ba, marami tayong mga, mga klase ng cognitive biases or heuristics. Pero, ang ibig sabihin lang ng heuristics and cognitive bias is padalos-dalos na desisyon. Mga desisyon na shortcut. Mga desisyon or solutions na hindi masyadong pinag-isipan. There's a problem, nagpanik ka, o nagalit ka, o natakot ka, boom, ito yung solusyon. 
kapag nag-shortcut ka ng solusyon, yung tawag doon, heuristics. Mga heuristic o mga solusyon na hindi masyadong pinag-isipan. Mga padalos-dalos na solutions. Ang tanong, saan ba nang gagaling yung mga heuristics na yan? One of the major sources ng heuristic, bakit ka magpapadalos-dalos ng desisyon? Kasi nga, ikaw ay kinakain ng malalakas na emotions mo. Masyado kang galit, masyado kang malungkot, masyado kang excited. Kapag na-overcome ng strong emotions yung iyong logic in trying to solve a problem, most likely yung solution na may isip mo ay eh hindi effective or hindi maganda. Kaya nga, di ba, kapag binasa mo yung Bible, one of the values na tinuturo is how to really calm yourself down kapag ikaw ay highly emotional. Di ba? Temperance. Dapat marunong kang i-handle yung emotions mo. Hindi yung kapag meron kang nararamdaman na emotions, gagawa ka ng mga solutions to your problems. For example, in Ecclesiastes, do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Few. Huwag masyadong mabilis mag o mabilis mag-isip ng solusyon, lalong-lalo na kapag emotional. A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient comes a quarrel. Lalong-lalo na sa mga meetings, kapag nagkakainitan na yung mga tao, di ba? Kapag nagsosolve sila ng problema, they have different perspectives, nagkakainitan na, merong mga solutions na ginagawa within the meeting na ineffective kasi ginawa out of emotions. Kaya kinakailangan talaga when there is a problem being solved, as much as possible, you need to pause and reflect and be logical more than emotional in trying to solve the problem. In everyday life, di ba? Kaya minsan, yung mga gustong makatipid, eh hindi nakakapagtipid eh. Kasi kapag pasok nila ng mall, na-overcome sila ng kanilang emotions, bili tuloy ng bili ng mga bagay na hindi kailangan. Therefore, nasisira yung diskarte nila for saving money. ba? Diba? Kaya kinakailangan talaga, if your problem is how to save money, kinakailangan ang pagaganahin mo yung logic mo, yung reason mo, and not your emotions. Para hindi ka napupunta sa mga ganyang sitwasyon. ba? Diba? Yung sinisira mo yung sarili mong solusyon. Sabi mo, you want to save money. Pero nagpapatalo ka naman sa excitement mo in buying things. ba? Diba? Kaya ang emotions, especially the strong ones, nakakasira talaga yan sa problem solving. Or worse, pwede kang makakumit ng krimen kapag hindi ka marunong mag-control ng emotions mo. Like, what is the cognitive psychology of road rage? Diba, simpleng gitgitan lang sa kalye, hindi lang nagkabigayan. Yung iba nga, nagkatinginan lang ng masama. O anong ginawa? Bumaba ng kotse, kinuha yung barel, binaril yung driver, nakulong patuloy siya. Kasi pinairal yung mataas na emotion. ba? Diba? Kung merong problema sa kalye, oh, ang kinakailangan dyan, yung party A at yung party B, pareho silang kalmado. Pareho silang reason ang pinairal nila to effectively solve the problem. Ang problema sa road rage kasi, eh pareho silang mataas ang levels of emotion. Parehong mataas ang level ng galit. Kaya yung mga solusyon nila to end the conflict, hindi maganda tulad ng paglabas ng barel at paputukan sa ulo yung kanyang kaaway. Di ba? Maraming hindi magandang solusyon ang nangyayari o naiisip when the mind is high in its emotional state. Kaya nga sabi ko dito, solving problems and strong emotions are not good match. If there is a problem at hand, ang pinapairal dapat dyan is reasoning. Sabi nga ng mga cognitive psychologists, no? Ito yung mga necessary steps na dapat mong pagdaanan to make sure na yung solution na ibibigay mo sa problema maganda. Dadaan ka sa mga steps na yan. Identify the problem, you define the problem, you select strategy, organize, or allocate resources, monitor solving, evaluate success. Step by step. At hindi mo magagawa yung mga steps na yan kapag highly emotional ka. Your tendency is, if you're emotional, after you identify a problem, punta ka kaagad dun sa isang solution na hindi mo naman pinag-usapan o hindi mo naman pinag-isipan. Therefore, ang tendency, papalpak yung solution. And the thing is, para madaanan mo isa-isa yung mga bilog na yan, it takes time. Diba? Kaya nga sabi ko dun sa slide ko, 
pause and reflect. There's a problem, pause and reflect. Why would you do that? To give yourself time na pagdaanan yung mga bilog na yan. I-define mo muna yung problema, ano yung mga strategies na dapat dyan, i-organize mo muna, so on and so forth. But these things will not happen kung paiiralin mo yung iyong strong emotions. Kaya kapag may problema, dapat kalmado. Huwag magpanik. Kung nagpapanik ka or mataas yung galit mo in trying to solve a problem, ang maganda dyan, pababain mo muna. Pababain mo muna yung emotions mo. Kapag medyo neutral ka na, nakakapag-isip ka na ng tama, then that's the time you try to solve the problem. Application number eight, medyo related to sa application number seven, you need to learn how to relax in solving a problem. Alam nyo kasi, sabi ng mga cognitive psychologists, the best solutions na nagawa to solve certain problems, naisip ng mga tao, na kakaisip ang mga tao ng solutions kapag sila ay nasa state of relaxation. Relaxed psyche creates best solutions. Tandaan nyo yan. Mas magaling tayo mag-isip ng solusyon kapag tayo ay relax. Kapag kalmado yung ating pag-iisip. Hindi tayo nagpapanik, hindi tayo busy, hindi tayo nata-time pressure. If we are in that state, the more we are able to think of better solutions to our problems. In fact, kung titignan mo raw yung history of science, karamihan ng mga top scientists natin, Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, yung nakadiscover ng benzene. Lahat sila, yung kanilang solutions to scientific problems, naisip nila yan while they were relaxing. Hindi sila yung, ano, no, yung naisip nila yung mga solutions na yan, they were not working in the laboratory. They were doing something else that relaxes them. Naglalakad-lakad sila, habang naiidlip sila, All while they were doing something else, doon sila nakakaisip ng solution, not during the time they are working in the laboratory. Kaya nga meron din mga nagsasabi na mga researches na the best moment to think of solutions to a problem is while you are taking a shower. Kasi daw kapag nagsashower ka, isa yan sa mga moments sa araw natin that we are most relaxed. Di ba? Pag nagsashower ka, yan yung ano eh, nare-relax yung katawan mo, nare-relax yung mind mo, and therefore, ang dami mong mga good ideas na naiisip habang nag-shower ka because relaxation gives birth to effective solutions. Another application is meditation. Dumadami na rin yung mga researches showing to us that the more people meditate, the more they are able to think of effective solutions to different problems. Kasi ganun naman talaga ang goal ng motivation, di ba? To rela oh, sorry, meditation, to relax the mind. And again, the more relaxed the mind is, the better it becomes in solving different problems. Dito na rin papasok yung incubation, eh, di ba? Kaya, di ba yung incubation, pinag-usapan natin yan sa first video, it makes sense when, we, when you think about the relaxed mind and incubation, di ba? Sa incubation, hindi mo muna iisipin yung problema. Hindi mo masolve yung problema, sumakit na yung ulo mo, pahinga ka muna. No? Pero anong ginagawa mo nung pahinga ka muna? Something relaxing. So habang nagpapahinga ka, habang nagre-relax ka, then that's the time that you are giving opportunity to your mind to think of other solutions. So yan din yung isang explanation why incubation is effective in problem solving because you are helping yourself to be more relaxed and therefore, mas nakakaisip ka ng mga magagandang solusyon. Application number nine. Minsan, sa pagsusolve ng problema, kinakailangan mo ng arbiter. Arbiter, ito yung pumapagit na between people, two people, who are trying to solve a problem. Lalong-lalo na kapag, halimbawa, yung dalawang taong yun, hindi na magkasundo, tumataas yung levels of emotions, tumataas pareho yung galit nila o yung inis nila sa isa't isa kasi hindi sila magkasundo, the best approach there, humanap ka ng isang tao na papagit na sa inyo. One good thing about arbiter is, yung arbiter, tutulungan kayo to achieve the, the, the prerequisites para maging maganda yung solution nyo to a problem. Yung sinabi ko kanina, strong emotions and relax. Kapag may arbiter ka kasi, 
ma-overcome nyo yung strong emotions. Kasi, hindi na nga kayo pareho makapag-isip ng maayos because you're both emotional. So, magpasok ka ng isang tao na hindi emotional. Neutral lang siya. ba? Diba? Yung taong yon siya ngayon ang magpapacify. Siya ngayon yung magsasabi sa inyo na masyado kayong emotional. And therefore, siya yung tutulong na mapababa muna yung emotions nyo before solving your problem. And second, yung relaxation. Dahil yung arbiter nandyan, kung magaling yung arbiter nyo, eh, matutulungan din niya kayo na mag-relax, na magkalma, na wag kayo masyadong mainit ang ulo in trying to solve your problem. Kaya maganda talaga na gagamit ng arbiter, no? ng isang tao na makakatulong sa dalawang kampo to solve a problem na hindi sila magkasundo. Pero given that, kinakailangan yung arbiter mo magaling din. Magaling mag-handle ng emotions, magaling mag-proseso ng information. Kaya ako, ang, ang, ang suggestion ko dito, yung arbiter na kukunin mo dapat eh, mature, emotionally mature. Mas mature sa inyong dalawa. Kasi kung kukuha ka lang arbiter na immature, di ba? O baka kumampi pa siya sa, ano, no, sa isa sa inyo, lalong magkaroon ng matataas na mga emotions. Okay? In the Bible, yung paggamit ng arbiter, sinasabi rin yan. Matthew 18:15 to 16 If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. Paano pag hindi? Paano kung hindi kayo nagkasundo na yung ginagawa niya? Kasalanan. How do you solve that problem? But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Magsasama ka ng isang tao pa or minsan necessary higit pa sa isa para mas masolve nyo yung problema nyo. Para mas makita nung kausap mo yung point mo. Again, hindi ka nagaharap ng kakampi dito, no? but the person na papasok as an arbiter will just help the camps, both camps, to see all the sides of the problem para mas maging maganda yung pag-solve ng problema. Application number 10. If you want to become a better problem solver, kinakailangan, eh, pag-aralan mong to solve more problems. Alam nyo, ano lang eh, simpleng equation lang yan eh, di ba? Bakit kinakailangan expose mo yung sarili mo sa mas maraming problema? Kasi ganito yan, more problems equals more learnings. Tama? Sa bawat problema, meron kang natututunan. And the more learnings that you have, mas dumadami yung available solutions mo na pwede mong gamitin for future problems. Kung baga, kung baga parang toolbox yan eh. Kapag nakaka-overcome ka ng isang problema, nadadagdagan yung piyesa mo sa toolbox mo. The next time na merong problema, ang daming laman ng toolbox mo, marami kang pwedeng maisip na solutions on how to solve that problem. Kaya nga, related din ito sa kaninang application, huwag kang tumakbo sa problema. More than sa pagtakbo ng problema, imbis na tumakbo ka sa problema, humanap ka ng mga problema na isosolve mo. Because the more problems you are able to solve, one of the improvements na nangyayari sa'yo, dumadami yung tools mo sa pagsosolve ng mga problema na yon. Kaya nga sabi ni Henry Ford, di ba? Most people, spend more time and energy going around problems than in trying to solve them. Hindi sila ganun ka-solid, hindi sila ganun ka, ka decidido, you know, na harapin yung problema. They go around, iniiwas-iwasan, ayaw pag-usapan, dinideny, but that won't work. You need to expose yourself to more problems, learn from more problems, and from there, become a more effective problem solver. In fact, yung Ano ba yung nagpaparami ng talino mo? Ano ba yung nagpaparami ng tools mo inside your toolbox when you expose yourself to problems? Trial and error. In cognitive psychology, trial and error is one of the best processes na pwede mong gamitin to improve your problem-solving skills. Diba? You try, tapos may error, anong gagawin mo? You adjust. Diba? Nagkakaroon ka ng mga bagong solutions kasi meron kang mga natututunan every time you commit an error. Kaya nga doon sa movie na Cast Away, if you have seen this film, to make the long story short, uh, nag-crash yung airplane niya sa isang island at siya lang yung nabuhay. Yung island na yon super isolated from civilization. 
So, ang problem ni Tom Hanks in that movie is, number one, how to survive in the island. Kasi talagang isolated yung island na yan. Wala siyang mga pagkain, wala siyang mga necessary na gamit. And number two, how to move away from that island para makapunta sa more civilized island. Kasi yung island na uh, napunta siya, halos walang dumadaan na eroplano o barko. Kaya kinakailangan niyang mag-travel from that island to the other islands to increase his chance of being seen by others. Okay? Pero, yun na nga. If you watch the entire movie, may kita mo talaga yung proseso ng trial and error eh. Kasi nga, wala siyang idea on how to survive in an island alone. So, what does he do? For more than three years yata to, no? for more than three years, trial and error siya. Paano humuli ng isda? Paano gumawa ng apoy? Paano lutuin yung mga nauhuli niya? Paano gumawa ng bangka para makaalis siya dyan? Trial and error. Unti-unti, trial and error siya ng trial and error until at the end of the movie, he was successful in number one, surviving, and number two, getting away from the island. ba? Diba? Kaya ganyan talaga dapat ang pag-exercise ng ating problem-solving ability. Let's solve more problems. Do a lot of trials and errors and then let's uh, let's absorb the lessons that we are learning from the process. Diba? At alam nyo ba, maybe I can motivate you to solve more problems. This is the road to expertise. Kasi diba marami naman mga tao gustong maging expert. Pag sinabi ng mga tao na expert ka, you feel good. Kasi this is something na talagang positive. For people to consider you an expert in a field, ay, isang karangalan yan. Pero, merong price ang pagiging expert. And what is that? You need to spend a lot of your time solving different problems in the field where you want to be an expert too. Diba? Walang ibang paraan para maging expert ka but to solve different problems. Do a lot of trial and errors. Halimbawa, yung mga best NBA coaches yung mga nagko-coach ng basketball, di ba? Kung tatanungin mo, bakit ba sila expert coach? For example, Phil Jackson. Siya yung may pinakamaraming championships sa NBA as a head coach. Bakit meron siyang 11 championships? Definitely, he's an expert in solving problems na basketball related. Paano dumipensa ng maayos? Paano mashoot yung bola? Di ba? Saan nang galing yung mga lessons na natutunan niya? To make him an expert basketball coach, it comes from solving a lot of problems in basketball. Kung titignan mo yung win-lose record ni Phil Jackson, it's 1,155 wins and 485 losses. Imaginin mo na lang, ilang problema ang isosolve mo sa isang basketball game? Diba? From first quarter to fourth quarter, 12 minutes each. How many problems will you encounter in that game? Marami. And then imagine, 1,155 kang haharap sa isang basketball game. In fact, kulang pa nga, i-add mo pa yung 485 losses. Bawat isa sa laro na yan, merong natututunan si Phil Jackson. Kumbaga, dumadami yung tools niya sa, kanilang psycho sa kanyang psychological toolbox to the point na kahit anong problema pa yung dumating sa harap niya, he is confident to solve that problem because he encountered that before. Saan nang galing yan? Trial and error. The same thing with Thomas Edison. Diba? Maybe you have heard of the story kung paano niya na-imbento yung light bulb. No? Imbento siya ng imbento ng light bulb, attempt siya ng attempt, trial and error siya ng trial and error to the point na nafufrustrate na pati yung kanyang mga assistants. And then one day, one of his assistants, kinausap si Thomas Edison, sabi niya, Sir, maybe... Uh, trying to develop a light bulb does not really work. Maybe we can just stop this project and move on to more promising projects. Nagalit sa kanya si Thomas Edison. Kasi sabi niya, I have not failed 1,000 times. I have successfully discovered 1,000 ways to not make a light bulb. ba? Ibig sabihin, yung pananaw ni Thomas Edison sa kanyang mga failures hindi siya failures as failures na alam natin. But each of those failures, meron siyang natutunan. Meron siyang lesson na natutunan that made him, that led him to finally one day invent the light bulb. 
di ba sabi niyo dito, yung 1,000 times na yan na pumalpak siya, ginamit niya lahat ng lessons na yon that he learned to help him with this trial and error. At sa kaka-trial and error niya, after 1,000 failures, finally, umilaw din yung light bulb na ini-invento niya. Diba? Kaya nga again, if you want to be an expert, there is no other way but to solve more problems. Look for problems to solve. Expose yourself to many problems and solve it. Because in doing so, magkakaroon ka ng wisdom. Diba? Kaya nga kung mapapansin ninyo, yung, ano ba yung archetype ng wisdom? Wise old man. Why is wisdom being equated to wise old man? Kasi, yung old man doon represents experience. And that experience, sa loob ng experience na yon, ang daming problema ng nakaharap ng taong to. Nag-trial and error siya, marami siyang natutunan while he was doing the process hanggang sa dumami ng dumami yung kanyang wisdom. Di ba? Solve more and more problems. And one application of this principle is, Sana meron kayong problem-solving journal. Kasi ang hirap sa mga tao, meron nga mga tao na ina-expose yung sarili sa maraming problema, tapos nasasolve nila yung mga problema. But the problem is, nalilimutan nila minsan yung solution doon sa problema na yun. So the next time that problem comes, nalilimutan nila kung ano yung ginawa nila dati to solve the problem. Kaya alam nyo ang magandang practical application dito, kumuha ka ng isang notebook, and that notebook... Gagamitin mo lang yan to record a problem na nakaharap mo and the solution that you did to solve the problem. Isama mo rin doon sa notebook mo yung mga solutions sa pumalpak. So, sa isang page ng notebook mo, isulat mo doon yung problema. Paano ako nakasave ng pera, for example? Tapos, isulat mo doon yung lahat ng solution na ginawa mo. Okay? Isulat mo rin doon kung ano yung nag-work sa hindi nag-work. Okay? So, the more you do that, habang nafi-fill up yung notebook mo ng maraming mga problema, in the future, pwede mong bisibisitahin yung notebook na yon to help you remember ano ba yung mga other approaches na ginamit mo noon that work and that did not work para hindi ka paulit-ulit. Diba? Minsan kasi we have the tendency. No? Yung paulit-ulit mong ginagawa yung solution na hindi naman pala effective. Eh, ba't mo ba kasi inulit? Eh, kasi nalimutan mo na na ginawa mo na pala dati yun and it did not work. And I think problem-solving journal can solve this. Meron kang talagang notebook where you can consult that notebook to help you solve problems better sa mga hinaharap. Alright? Application number 11, make more mistakes. Kapag ikaw, nagsosolve ka ng problema, huwag mong aasahan na gusto mo isang try mo lang, makukuha mo kaagad. In fact, dapat ang goal mo is to commit more mistakes. Bakit? Anong meron sa mistakes? Because mistakes makes you a better problem solver. Sabi nga ng quotation, I've learned so much from my mistakes, I'm, may, I'm thinking of making a few more. Kasi nga, kapag meron kang mistakes, you adjust. And when you adjust, it means improvement. Diba? Meron kang strategy na ginamit. Mali pala yung strategy na yun. So, anong gagawin mo? From there, ia-adjust mo yung strategy mo para mas maging maganda siya. And the more you adjust your strategy, the closer you become sa pagsosolve ng isang problema. Alimbawa, away kayo ng away ng asawa mo. ba? So, gumamit ka ng mga different strategies para hindi kayo away ng away. Pero, dapat at the back of your head, huwag kang umasa ng isang strategy mo palang dapat mag-work na. In fact, dapat nga mas healthy na itong strategy na ito most likely hindi mag-work. Kasi kapag masyado kang umasa na, oh, gagawin ko itong strategy na to, mas magiging sweet ako. Tapos hindi nag-work, masungit pa rin, o nag pa rin kayo, madi-discourage ka eh. ba? The more you're going to think na baka wala nang solution sa problema to, hindi ganun. Okay? Kapag meron kang solution, i-expect mo na na most likely this will not work. Pero, no need to panic. If this strategy does not work, ang gagawin ko, kukunin ko lang yung feedback, i-analyze ko lang why it did not work, make adjustments, and try again. Ganun dapat ang orientation. Diba? Yung dapat we are looking for more mistakes 
to enable adjustment. Sabi nga ni Bill Gates, success is a lousy teacher. It seduces smart people into thinking they can't lose. Ibig sabihin, kapag puro success kasi yung nararanasan natin, hindi tayo nag adjust Wala tayong binabago sa approach natin. Kasi panalo eh. Kasi nag-work eh. Pero tinan mo, kapag merong mistake o kapag natalo ka, mas marami tayong natututunan doon. Because mas marami tayong adjustments na ginagawa when we lose or when our strategy fail. Diba? Sabi nga ni Sir Ken Robinson, unfortunately, hindi ganun yung pananaw ng maraming tao on mistakes. Sabi ni Ken Robinson, for most of us, the problem isn't that we aim too high and fail, it's just the opposite. We aim too low and succeed. We are so obsessed with winning. We are so obsessed with immediate solutions that work. Kaya ang nangyayari, takbo tayo ng takbo sa mga mistakes, wala tayong natututunan. Diba? Sabi nga ng isa pang author, no, failure or mistakes, they are better teachers than success. Mas marami tayong natututunan when we fail more than when we succeed. Kaya dapat ma-overcome mo yung ganyang attitude mo, yung gusto mo na isang strategy ko lang na-apply, dapat mag-work ha. Kung ito hindi nag-work, ayoko na. Hindi dapat ganyan ang attitude because it is during those moments that we fail, that we commit mistakes, that we learn more. You apply that in the field of technology. Bakit ba yung mga telepono, pa-high-tech pa, pa ng pa-high-tech, pa-advance ng pa-advance? The answer, because they're making adjustments. Saan nang gagaling yung adjustments that they're making? Ano yung basis ng adjustments na yan? From the wrong things in the previous version. Diba? Kaya nga nagkakaroon ng iPhone 1, iPhone 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Diba? Let's talk about iPhone 10. What's wrong with iPhone 9? A lot. Maraming mga complaints about iPhone 9. Kulang ng ganito, kulang ng ganyan. Mabagal ang ganito, mabagal ang ganyan. So ano nangyayari? I-adjust yung mga yung mga problems na yon para magkaroon ng iPhone 10. Eh yung iPhone 10 ganun din. Magkakaroon din ng maraming problema yan, may mga glitches yan, marami na namang tao may mga complaints dyan. Anong gagawin ng Apple? Analyze again those mistakes, magkakaroon ng iPhone 11, and the process does not stop. Ganun naman talaga sa buhay, no? Mistakes, you analyze, and then you make it better. Let's apply this in sports psychology. Last 2018, I think. Tama ba? 2018? I think it's... Yeah. No, sorry. 2019 season. No, Naglaban yung San Beda at saka yung Letran in the NCAA Seniors Basketball Finals. Now, just to give you some context, itong San Beda in that season, bago nila hinarap yung Letran Knights, ang record nila, 18-0. 18-0. Ibig sabihin, wala silang talo. You know? Lahat ng kinilaban nila on that season, before the championships, all of them, they won the game. 18-0. Yung Letran, hindi sila ganun ka-perfect. Their record was 12-6. and six. Meron silang 6 losses. Kaya naman, nung nagharap yung San Beda and Letran, ang underdogs talaga yung Letran, mas malakas yung San Beda sa perspective ng mga tao kasi never lost versus 12-6. So, people were stunned when on game 1, yung Letran tinalo yung San Beda. Kasi people were expecting na talagang mananalo yung San Beda kasi 18-0 nga eh, unbeatable. Pero nanalo yung Letran over San Beda now. Connect that to what we are discussing so far about problem solving. Bakit nasob ng Letran Knights yung perfect record ng San Beda Red Lions? I think the key to that win, to that game one win, yung kanilang six losses. Naging disadvantage pa yung zero losses ng San Beda kumpara sa Letran. Letran kasi six losses, Beda zero. In what way? Yung Letran, yung from that six losses, mas marami silang adjustments na nagawa. Marami silang mga lessons na natutunan from that six losses. Eh, yung San Beda, zero nga eh. So, parang wala masyadong adjustments na ginagawa kasi, ba't ka mag adjust Eh, nananalo naman kayo. Just continue what you keep on doing. Pero itong letran, yung six losses na yan, 
Yan talaga, dyan sila nag-reflect. Ano yung mga dapat nating i-adjust? Ano yung dapat nating i-improve? And that six losses work for them on game one of the finals. Natalo nila yung San Beda Red Lions. And to make the long story short, in terms of doon sa championship na, overall, Latran Knights defeated San Beda Red Lions. Talaga sila yung nanalo sa series. Kasi dito, 1-0 pa lang yan. Best of three games to, no? Pero tinalo, to make the long story short, Latran Knights won over San Beda Red Lions. And again, if you're going to ask me, ano ang pinakamalaking factor of that Latran win over San Beda? Those six losses that they had during the regular season. Marami silang natutunan doon. Marami silang adjustments na ginawa that helped them to win the championship. Kaya again, ang, ang paulit-ulit kong sinasabi dito, huwag matakot sa problema. Huwag matakot magkamali. Because it is from those mistakes that you learn that you become a better problem solver. And last one, application number 12, if you want to become a better problem solver, ask for counsel. Ibig sabihin, maghanap ka ng mga tao na mas magaling sa'yo, mas experienced sa'yo in solving that problem. If you remember Yohari's window, di ba? Ina-apply tong Yohari's window na ito sa personality psychology. Pero alam nyo, ma-apply nyo rin to sa problem solving, di ba? Alam nyo ba sa problem solving, meron din tayong blind spot. Ibig sabihin ng blind spot, ito yung mga solutions na alam ng iba pero hindi natin nakikita. Eh bakit hindi natin nakikita? Kasi nga kulang tayo sa experience. Maybe we don't have enough experience to spot those solutions to our problem. Pero ang good news, maraming tao sa paligid mo na alam yung solution sa problema mo because they are more experienced than you. So the best way to solve one problem or one of the best ways to solve one problem, hanap ka ng tao na mas experienced sa'yo, i-present mo yung problema, most likely, meron kang blind spot. All the while, malinaw na pala dapat ang solution. Hindi mo lang alam kasi kulang kasi experience. Pero, yung taong yo na tinanungan mo, she or he has been there. I've been there, sasabihin niya sa'yo, di ba? I've been there. Nanggaling na ako dyan. Papunta ka pa lang, pabalik na ako. Ito ang solution dyan. Trust me, it would work. Di ba? Kaya dapat i-acknowledge mo na meron kang blind spot. Hindi mo alam lahat ng solution sa problema mo. And you know, that's very biblical. Di ba? Sabi sa Proverbs, Where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Proverbs 15.22 Plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. So, yung mga advisors na yan, yung mga counselors na yan, ito yung mga tao na mas magaling sa'yo. Sila yung mag expose sa'yo ng blind spots mo at sila yung mga tao na mag offer sa'yo ng solutions on how to solve your problem. Kaya alam nyo, isang application dito is, there is a wisdom behind mentoring. Diba? Na maghahanap ka dapat ng mentor mo if you are in a certain field. Ang magiging papel ng mentor mo is to help you solve problems that you have not encountered before. Problema na wala kang idea kung paano isolve. Yan yung magiging papel ng mentor mo. Diba? Kasi nga, hindi mo alam lahat. And don't, don't assume na alam mo ang lahat. Kasi kapag ganyan ng attitude mo, alam mo lahat, hindi ka maghahanap ng mentor. Therefore, kakainin ka ng buong-buo ng blind spots mo. Diba? Actually, pwede mo namang tiisin eh. Halimbawa, wala kang mentor. Tapos, blind, meron kang blind spot. Pwede mo namang tiisin yun, no? Ikaw, ikaw mismo ang mag-research. But that takes time. Pero kapag may mentor ka, sasabihin na lang niya sa'yo yung strategy. I-apply mo na lang, oh, mas mabilis yung pagkakatuto mo. Diba? So, dapat balance eh. Meron kang mga solutions na na figure out mag-isa, pero meron ka rin mga solutions na nanggagali sa mga mentors mo. And another application here na hindi ko na nailagay sa slide is, kinakailangan yung attitude mo pagdating sa mga tao mas magaling sa'yo, positive. Most people kasi, when they see people better than them, instead of appreciating, instead of picking up their brains, we feel insecure. Tama? O, oh, mas magaling sa akin to, I feel insecure. Eh? 
'di ba? Minsan nga nagiging critical pa tayo of people better than us eh. We see them as our competition. Hindi tama 'yon. Kapag may nakita kang taong mas magaling sa iyo, huwag kang ma-insecure. Huwag mo siyang awayin. Ang gawin mo, mas maging motivated ka. Wow, ang galing niya. One day I will also become like that person. At the same time, kaibiganin mo yung taong yon. Sir, ma'am, I really appreciate, no? I really appreciate your expertise in this field. Can you teach me? Can you take me under your wings to become better, to become the best like you? Ganyan ang magandang approach para mas magaling na problem solver ka. Alright? Even in sports, we apply that principle. ba? Diba? Kapag ikaw head coach ka ng basketball, ikaw lang bang mag-isa? Ikaw lang bang mag-isa nagko-coach ng mga players mo? Hindi. Kasi kahit head coach ka pa, may mga blind spots ka rin. Meron ka mga solutions na hindi mo alam, pero baka alam ng mga assistant coaches mo. Even the best coaches in NBA, they still have assistant coaches because they they accept the fact na meron din silang blind spots sa pagsosolve ng problema sa basketball. ba? Diba? O, kaya inuulit-ulit ko nga yung Proverbs 15.22 Plants fail for lack of counsel but with many advisors they succeed. And you know what? Pwede mo na naman i-relate to doon sa San Beda and Letran Finals eh. Isa sa mga issues na lumabas while you know in that in that championship series between the two schools no maraming mga tao parang naiinis doon sa coach ng Letran kasi raw unfair yung coach ng Letran eh di meron siyang mga assistant coaches no meron pang mga ibang professional coaches na tumutulong sa kanya on how to beat San Beda at yung mga coaches na yon nagco-coach sa PBA the professional league here in the Philippines. ba? Diba? So, other than the assistant coaches na meron siya sa bench, meron pa siyang mga personal friends na mga coaches din na tumutulong sa kanya. Kaya yung mga San Beda fans, naiinis na bakit ganun. No, ba, dapat nakikinig lang siya sa assistant coaches. Pero wala naman kasing ruling sa NCAA na hindi pwedeng mag-coach yung mga kaibigan mo. ba? Diba? I mean prerogative na ng coach yun eh, kung makikinig ba siya. And he did. So, ang dami niyang counsel na nakukuha from his assistant coaches to his friend coaches nakatulong yun sa kanilang pagkakapanalo ng championship. So, this confirms what Proverbs 15.22 is saying na, ma- na talagang mas magaling tayong mag-solve ng problema if we receive many counsels from different people. And of course, let's not forget, marami nakakalimot nito, the best counsel na dapat nating hinahanap is the counsel from above, from God. In fact, before we ask counsel from people around us, dapat inuuna natin yung counsel from above. Dapat si God muna ang tinatanong natin, na i-expose sa atin yung blind spots natin, at itanong sa Kanya kung ano ba yung magandang gawin. ba? Diba? Because He is after all the source of wisdom. Proverbs 2.6 For the Lord gives wisdom, from His mouth come knowledge and understanding. Ang Diyos ang nagbibigay ng wisdom. E paano mo makukuha yung wisdom na yan? ba? Diba? So if God is the source of wisdom, and you want wisdom, paan mo kukunin yan? James answers that. If any of you lacks wisdom, anong gagawin mo? You should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Ang hirap sa mga tao, Kasi, yung wisdom nila, hinahanap muna nila sa tao. Pag hindi nag-work, dun palang pupunta kay God. Paliktad. You have a problem, wala namang puntahan, God. And God will lead you to the right solution to your problem. Hindi ko naman sinasabing huwag na tayong humingi ng tulong sa ibang tao, pero dapat balanse eh. At nasa priority. Priority list, God, and then ask counsel from other people. After all, God may also use other people to give you the wisdom that you are looking for. Okay? So, in summary, as we close our discussion on problem solving, ito yung iba't ibang mga paraan to make you a better problem solver. Gawing tanong ang mga problems, differentiate problems from facts of life, increase knowledge through research, match mode of thinking to the type of problem that you have, palipasin mo muna ang oras, huwag kang tumakbo sa mga problema, Pause and reflect. Huwag mo munang pairalin yung strong emotions mo. Relax. Gumamit ka ng arbiter. Solve more problems. Make more mistakes. And be mentored. Okay, so I hope itong mga 12 
solutions natin or 12 tips natin on how to solve problems makatulong sa inyo in trying to solve your problems that you are currently facing pati na yung mga problema that you will encounter in the future. And by the way, kung halimbawa meron kayong mga problema in the future na kakaharapin tapos ginamit nyo yung mga tinuro ko ngayon and it work, leave a comment below. Ikwento nyo lang ng mabilis. Thank you for listening and God bless.